Everybody, I'd like to welcome you to the Planning Commission this evening. Uh, I'd like to call it to order at 6 o'clock according to the phone, 6.01 according to this clock. And uh, we'll have roll call. Chairman Cox? Here. Vice Chairman Rajaratnam? Here. Commissioner Yates? Here. Commissioner Ferris? Here. And Commissioner DeHaan is absent. Thank you. Uh, would everybody rise for the Pledge of Allegiance? And uh, Lauren, would you lead us, please? Yes, please stand with me, face the flag, hand over your heart, and repeat after me. I pledge, pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. You can be seated. Do I have a motion to approve the uh, agenda? Mr. Chairman? Yes, sir. If I may, sir, I would request a change to item. I'm requesting a change to item A. This is on the agenda? 8B, yes, the agenda. Okay. I'd request that we strike the second sentence. Uh, we are uh, only going to be considering a vacation of right away across this property, this APN. So the uh, that second sentence, I'd wish that uh, I'd, I'd request that, that be struck from the agenda. You're talking about after the one one seven nine zero for four parcels. Uh, yes, that's correct. I'd, okay. uh, I'm requesting that second sentence to be struck from the uh, that particular. Agenda item. Thank you. So I do I hear a motion to approve the agenda with that correction? I so move. Second. Chairman Cox? Aye. Vice Chairman Rajaratnam? Aye. Commissioner Yates? Aye. Commissioner Ferris? Aye. Four ayes, motion carries. Thank you. Do I have a, a motion to approve the minutes from last meeting? So moved. I second. Chairman Cox? Aye. Vice Chairman Rajaratnam? Aye. Commissioner Yates? Aye. Commissioner Ferris? Aye. Four ayes, motion carries. Thank you. We move into the public uh, comment section of our agenda. Persons wishing to address the Commission on matters that are within the Commission's jurisdiction and do not already appear on the agenda may do so at this time. Pursuant the Brown Act, the Planning Commission may not take action on, on an item that does not appear on the agenda. Speakers are limited to five minutes. The public comment section of the agenda is limited to a total of one hour. Each speaker is asked to provide his or her name and address. We will now open the public comment section. Thank you. Seeing no rush to the mic, we will close the uh, public section at 6.04. Moving on to uh, um, item 7, SPR 18-01, a request by KBM Properties, LLC, and Norma Ridgecrest Storage Partners to construct additional storage units, 15,531 square feet, located at 1430 North Norma Street, APN number 419-020-02 staff report this is a uh, revised uh, site plan for the proposed expansion of uh, a american storage at 1430 1430 north norma street uh, proposed is the addition of three new storage buildings um, it is a general commercially zoned property um, of about three and a half acres, and it's surrounded by um, mostly similar uses. We have um, to the north Mission Bank, the south the Tivoli Center, 
um, the mobile home park to the east, and um, optometrist office of Dr. Mallory to the west. And there's the uh, context. Now this previously um, was brought to the Planning Commission last month, and the proposed additions were slightly larger, but um, the m most significant change is going to be the removal of a previously proposed decomposed granite uh, large vehicle storage area. That area is now being left unimproved uh, to be basically retained for future improvements. We, there was also some discussion last time around of the fact that there is not uh, on-site detention uh, proposed or was not on-site detention proposed to handle the runoff from a 10-year uh, storm. Uh, th these revisions uh, somewhat address that point, but uh, staff feels that there isn't enough detail provided about the on-site detention uh, to adequately address the drainage concerns. And there you see uh, the site as it is presently. So for that reason um, of not fully addressing our concerns about drainage uh, we recommended that this application uh, be denied. That's it. Uh, we do have a representative here from A American Storage. And that's what I would Josh. like. Would you come up, please, sir? Good evening. Can you hear me? Yeah. Yes, we can hear you. So before I turn it over to the public, I, I know that the commissioners have some questions for you. Okay. Because this has come back several times, and, and in fact, staff was questioned why it came back. Mm -hmm. yes. So um, are there any commissioner's questions that you would like to ask staff or this, uh, the developer? I, Can you state your name, please? Uh, yes. Josh Patterson. Thank you. I have a couple questions for the developer. Okay. Um, <clears throat> This is, I believe, the fourth time that we've seen this come back before planning. Yes. And every time the site plan comes back, it, it looks to be incomplete because there's no um, water detention or drainage mm -hmm. issues that have been addressed. Yes. Um, now that it's back again, it's, it's not addressed again. So my, my question is, is it, are, are you wanting a variance on that? And would it be easier to to go and, and see if we can get some sort of variance for that instead of just bringing it forward and having it denied multiple times? Uh, uh, the thinking is is that uh, we've already contracted a uh, soils engineer. We already contracted them for a soils test. Uh, percolation, mm -hmm. I believe, is what it's called. Um, they haven't been able to get it done before the planning, before this next meeting. Um, we've had, obviously, we ran into some issues with the budget. When, after the first time it was approved, so we had to downsize the amount of square footage we did in order to make it fit into our budget. And then that's where we kind of hit this thing with the uh, detention basins. Uh, we did propose two detention bases on the site from what the civil engineer thought was best. That is, uh, I believe it's 22. Um, they should be in the site plan, uh, line item 22. There is one above building F to the north, and then there is one uh, just in front of the drive in the driveway just to the east I'm sorry just to yeah just to the east of uh, Norma so they were added um, we can't give you the exact specifics uh, we will you know follow the uh, this guideline to make sure that they can handle a 10-year storm and everything else it's just that we haven't been able to plant to get everything in place yet we're working as fast as we can it's not ready Every month that it's delayed, you know, it t we, the thing's just breaking even right now, to be honest with you. So the owners and stuff, they want to get this done as soon as possible. So we want to work with the city. We want to improve the area along Graph. We, we hope that if this first expansion works, uh, we will add more, provided there is a need for more storage. We want to do it responsibly. We don't just want to come in there and build a 60,000-square-foot monster and only be able to fill up half of it and have a business that doesn't run successfully. So that is basically the story where we're at right now. 
So we should have the soils test. They were out here Monday. So once they get the percolation test, they have it back to send to our civil engineer. He will have the drainage plan and everything that you guys need. We just don't have it right now. Okay. But waiting another month keeps us from going and getting, uh, you know, working drawings started, shopping for a loan, and, you know, we've already have, We've already worked with, uh, got proposals from Zern, uh, Greenscape, and some of the local vendors up here because we want to use as many local vendors as possible for the project, but we're just, you know, kind of stuck right now. Best way to put it. Is this unimproved land? Is that intended to be uh, large vehicle storage? Not anymore. Uh, he said, uh, I, that's actually my bad. When I was reading through the code, I was reading the, uh, civil, the civil code, or I got the civil municipal mixed up, so you can park it on DG on... Um, private property but not on commercial property so rv storage isn't going to make or break the project it was just an afterthought like let you guys know that we will if we if we can put some in there we would but it's not we don't need to have it that way so we'll just leave it unimproved we don't think we'll use and so it's not your intent to use that for no. large vehicle storage okay any other questions mr cult would you mind coming up please Because this map is small enough here, would you give me some definition? Am I reading this correctly? The outer lines here, here, this is all paved. That's my understanding, yes. And looking at the plan, trying to uh, read the construction notes on the plan, that's my Okay, and, and the plan has come back and been reconfigured different ways a number of times. I'm now noticing an entrance here on West Graff. Is that new? Yeah, the prior plan did not identify an entrance off of Graff. That would and require I, a curb cut and an ADA, uh, an ADA compliant driveway. Approach. And so I didn't see anything in the conditions that required them an encroachment to, to put that entrance. No, this, uh, this particular uh, uh, site plan um, is not the one in which the staff had reviewed for the initial conditions. The conditions that you see uh, currently were uh, for the prior uh, site plan that you had looked at. Okay, so now if they leave, leave, I have two issues here. The unimproved land, if they leave that bare dirt, there is a percolation there. Are they required as much on-site retention? No, the uh, on-site re retention would be uh, reduced. Um, and it's actually detention and not retention. Okay. They're not required to retain the full amount of uh, runoff. They're just required to detain it and allow the uh, retain the peak runoff by uh, the uh, by them not having as much impervious surfaces there. Uh, their uh, their re their detention requirements are are much less. less. Okay. So the only other thing is is you've already grubbed this property, sir. You've already taken the native bushes off of this soil, and it's bare dirt. I'm, I'm wanting to know what your plan is for dust mitigation. Oh, we, my, when we purchased the property, the bushes were already, we only purchased it in June of last year, so we didn't plow the black lot. It was already like okay. that when we purchased well, it. Well, the, the problem is, is with the native bushes mm -hmm. gone and the winds that we get across here, we, we end up moving dirt consistently. Mm -hmm. and, and so... Part of uh, our general plan and, and city requirements is dust mitigation. And so if we're going to have traffic coming in and out of here, mm -hmm. that's not going to be a hard surface. That's going to be fluffed, if you want to put it that way, on a consistent basis. And, and even with the aprons that are around the storage units, uh, that could be a problem. So I'm asking, what what are your plans for dust mitigation? Would we could change it back to uh, having it be DG, and that would probably be fine, wouldn't it, Mr. Culp? If if they if they put the native soil, it wouldn't change the percolation, mm -hmm. would it? If they put DG down to cut down any dust mitigation, it would uh, help the uh, dust mitigation. Um, in terms of drainage, you are changing the coefficient of runoff by changing the type of material 
there is a, a difference, a slight difference, not a great difference. It's probably not significant, but you would uh, be increasing the amount of runoff just by the change in the uh, surface materials. But uh, would it the should be, better uh, be able with to gravel? Uh, retain or keep the dust down. It would still require some maintenance, of course. As, uh, as traffic might uh, pass over the DG, it does tend to break down. It does decompose, as it says. That, so there would be uh, some maintenance that would be required. What about the drainage for, for uh, gravel? It, it would not increase it significantly. Um, there is a, a, a small change in the runoff coefficient between DG and native uh, earth materials. So they could put gravel on here and not affect significantly any of the perk and uh, and so all we would be addressing is is the detention um, and and make that work and then with the new entrance uh, there's an encroachment permit that's required on that new entrance okay uh, on graph um, so I, I think that we can probably get through this without adding any other expense to you but you'll need to put that on there and and bring it back unless we can so condition it, can we? Uh, certainly, yes. And, and uh, you know, as a matter of fact, it'd be a condition they're they're going to have to have a building permit, and so the uh, staff would have the ability to enforce uh, those those uh, ordinances that are in effect at that time, or or uh, conditions or requirements in effect at that time. So staff would have the leverage to ensure that the uh, that the ordinance was complied to and all the elements of uh, construction of the of the uh, detention facilities and encroachment permits and so forth would be uh, would be accomplished so the only thing that we would really need to add we're not going to have to deal with the entrance the new entrance is is to as put in the condition that that the uh, uh, unimproved land has gravel on it yeah this is your uh, means of uh, mitigating uh, wind blown dust and sand. Okay. Any other questions from the commission? Anything that you'd like to present to us, sir? Uh, just that the, uh, the the driveway, I believe the architect put it in there for a fire code, just so you have another entrance, because we're not going to use it as an ingress and egress. It'd only be an emergency entrance and exit, so I don't know if that makes a difference or not. Okay. Okay, thank you, sir. Thank you. Um, I turn uh, uh, any time over to the public, if the public has any comment in relationship to this. I don't see any comments or anybody coming up for comments on this. So I would look for a motion from the uh, Planning Commission. The recommendation is to deny. Um, I think if, the, if we add the condition of gravel uh, and it's not used for large vehicle um, parking. And they will have to meet the building code, so that means they'll have to do the uh, encroachment for the street entrance. Uh, anyway, I think if we add that condition, we could probably approve it. But I'm not going to put out the recommendation. So am I receiving a recommendation of denial or approval with conditions or... Anybody want to? I move that we approve it with the conditions. Which conditions? <laughs> that the, um, yeah, with the, um, well, let me see how we The unimproved land. The unimproved land would be covered with DG. No and, gravel. Uh, yeah. With if gravel. you do DG, then it changes the coefficient on the drainage. So okay. that's what we went to. I think we're saying, I, I was meaning the same thing. But yeah. Okay. So with gravel, um, and then we we approve the the process. Do I have a second? Do I have an abstain? Abstain. What about the detention? Don't we need to uh, have the detention on there as a condition as well? Well, there's, there's two t detention spots that are already in here. Mm -hmm. The staff feels like that they're not uh, significant enough. Um, but the engineering report's not in yet as far as um, the natural soil, what the perk is going to be on that. 
So as Mr. Culp had said, they're still going to have to meet the city code. So the, the drainage and the detention is still going to be required. Um, it's just being determined how much. Commissioners? Yes, sir. I, it should be noted that there is already a condition in the draft resolution requiring the drainage um, to meet the 10-year storm. Um, but we just wanted to see more information um, presented as to the, how the uh, detention basins were going to be constructed. And that was the basis for our recommendation. But there, uh, you know, there's nothing preventing uh, that being adopted as a uh, condition of approval. In fact, it's already in there. It's already okay. in there. Give, so, given so, that knowledge, I'll second uh, okay. the approval of this with the condition that earlier stated. So we have a first and a second with that condition. condition. Gravel beyond in the unimproved areas. You guys wanted the no use of the large vehicle storage as well? Yes. And the encroachment permit for the street? Well, that'll be automatic. Okay. They'll have to do that with their building permit. Okay. Chairman Cox? Aye. Vice Chairman Roger Rotnam? Abstain. Commissioner Yates? Aye. Commissioner Ferris? Aye. Three ayes, motion carries. Thank you. So get them what they need and move forward. All right. All right, moving on to uh, number eight, tentative track map one, two, two, seven, eight, a request by Cornerstone Engineering to subdivide a 2.5 acre parcel into two commercial parcels located at 1409 North Norma Street, APN. Four one eight zero three zero nine. Staff report. Okay, this is um, a proposal to di to divide uh, an existing commercially developed parcel of two point one five acres into two parcels, both of which would uh, conform with the area zoning. Um, one of the buildings on the site is currently occupied by the offices of Dr. Mallory, and uh, the other at present is vacant. Um, it's zoned uh, CG, general commercial, and is surrounded by similarly zoned land and similar uses, um, primarily a mixture of uh, shopping centers and professional offices. Um, it's categorically exempt um, given that this is a minor division of land and here we have some context. So leave it right there for a second. Okay, so where they're looking to split it is you see the TPM on this site See that building? And you see the little building right between the little building and that TPM building from front to back, correct? Yes, that's correct. Okay. So given that uh, this proposed division of land is going to produce two conforming parcels and that they're both already uh, fully developed, we felt that it was um, appropriate to approve the application. Uh, there is a list of engineering conditions which Mr. Witten, on behalf of the applicant, would like um, at least some elements of which to be reconsidered. And I believe uh, he has prepared um, a list which we have distributed to you and his, his reasoning. And I believe he would like to, the opportunity to explain his rationale. Mr. Whitten? Mr. Cox and Planning Commissioners, um, my name is Daryl Whitten. I'm with Cornerstone Engineering and we are here tonight to uh, 
talk about a tentative parcel map for Dr. Mallory. Right now, Dr. Mallory owns a single parcel that has two separate office uh, and lab facilities on it. Investigating the history of this project, at one time, these were indeed two separate parcels and two separate um, office slash uh, building complexes. And for some reason, the prior owners merged them together. I think, I think he wanted to build the third project, which was around the corner. He didn't want to mess with the parcel map, so he just merged these two lots together and created the parcel that he wanted for the third piece. But these are two standalone buildings. They have their own dedicated parking. They don't share any common utilities. They don't share any common driveways. Um, and so if this were in another jurisdiction, this would be done with a parcel map waiver. But there is no, uh, there's nothing in the city code that allows us to do that. So we're here to do a parcel map. But all we're asking is for a map. This is not a project. These projects are complete and constructed. Both buildings were put up between 1978-1980, around there. So, um, so the on-site improvements rather old, but they're they're still there. Um, <clears throat> the conditions of approval that have been set out by the uh, the city engineer, I feel, have some problems, and I'd like to point these out and ask for revisions. Um, do you guys have my, my red line strikeout versions of these conditions? Can you yeah, read? Heather brought it to you today. Yes. Okay, now, before we go through that, Mr. Mm -hmm. Witten, have you read the revision? I have, what I did was I took the revision that I received uh, late yesterday and I've edited it with a oh, lot okay. of... Okay, as long as you got the latest revision, I'm, I'm okay with that because I didn't get it till today. Oh no! And I so I'm wanting to make sure that you have the correct one. Right. What I what I've done a a, a strikeout and, and edited version of was the revision that that came to me yesterday. Okay. So I think we're all we're all on the same page there. Thank you. So, <clears throat> first of all, uh, the street improvements. We are willing to concede that um, it's the responsibility of the applicant to upgrade the sidewalks around the site so that everything is ADA compatible. And the corner, uh, there's, right now there's no ADA curb cut at the corner. Right. So um, conditions, uh, condition A1, A, and B are fine. Condition C, we would just like to insert, rather than remove existing sidewalk panels, um, I was looking at sidewalk panels. There are a few that have lifted a little bit. They're, there's not any big trees around the sidewalk, so there's just a little bit of shaving that needs to be done to take some, some bumps down on some corners. So I think if we could just insert the word or shave. It, it can, has that. It says remove or okay. shave existing right. you, sidewalk. Yeah, the, the word or shave is underlined. That was inserted by me. Okay. Okay. Um, that's my first request. The next one is uh, condition A1E. Condition A1E um, has is, been deleted. Okay. Well, I've deleted it. That's my my request is that it be deleted. And the re, the rationale for this is that this is a condition that requires an enforcement of a future event. This is not a practical condition of approval for the map because there's no way to enforce this condition at a point beyond the. Uh, the date of, re of recordation. And besides that, this condition would be a requirement of any future tenant improvements. Excuse me just a minute. Okay. 
I'm sorry, I'm trying to do housekeeping. I am listening to you, but yeah, what you're looking at this red line strikeout version, you can't see it in red in in Word. It was in red, but where you see conditions that have been deleted, this is what I would like to have the Planning Commission adopted. So you can see the condition that was written um, in the staff report, and then I've deleted it. So it's got a line through it. That means this is an, an addition or sub, this is a, a condition that I'd like to see deleted. Okay, I'm not seeing that because all I'm seeing is the comment on condition and original draft. Yeah. So all I'm seeing is your comments. I'm not seeing the uh, original draft with your deletions. Okay. And if we need to make copies of that, we can continue this for five minutes while staff gets us that. The last one you just gave us tonight? No, because this is the one that was given to me tonight. It still has E. doesn't have that. You got this one. So this one down. Commissioners. We got both of them. Yeah, I mean, this is what was given to me, and I'm... That's the, that's the version. That's the version that I'm and then I've got this. This is the one with the red line. That you've the red lines didn't show up, but on the back is the comments, which will show you. Mine doesn't have. Yeah, see, I've got a The staff report should contain the unrevised or the, the first staff produced revision. You should have a separate standalone packet that has Mr. Witten's um, requested revisions. Yeah, let me see if I've got it. Okay, I do have it. Thank you. Okay, to start at the beginning, does everybody have a copy of the version that says remove or shave in condition one A, A1C? Yes. Okay, if you have that, then that's the, that's the insertion. I'm asking that the word or shave be inserted in there. Then down below there's A1E, which reads, at the time, the, at the time of application for, tentative, for tenant improvements, which is at some point in the future, an ADA complete access to, to the street structure for both parcels one and two shall be, okay, I, I get that, that should be done, but I don't, under, I don't see how that's enforceable at the time of recordation on the map. Um, it's a good idea, and I'm sure it'll be enforced when somebody comes in in the future and wants to do tenant improvements, but it's not an appropriate condition on this map because it's not enforceable. So I would just ask that it be deleted. Um, now let's go to condition three. Condition three says drainage improvements on site. Um, and I would ask that this entire section be deleted. Um, these conditions are either simple statements of fact or they place conditions that have to be met in the future. Any future site work would open the door for the city to address the site drainage conditions. So as far as being a condition for getting the map recorded, I don't think it's an appropriate condition because there's nothing that has to be done now. So I'd, I'd ask it to be deleted. Um, condition number four says, 4A says, any and all new tenants or owners or change in use of the structure shall apply for sewer service. Mr. Mallory, is there sewer service to these buildings already? Yes, there is. So I don't see the point of this condition. It's already been met. So could we strike condition four, the entire condition? Um, condition five has to do with street lighting. And there are two aspects of this. Mainly it says coordinate with Southern Cal Edison and construct decorative street lighting along Norma Street and Reeves Street. Norma Street already has two street lights on it. 
There's one right at the corner of Norma and Reeves on the applicant's corner. And there's another one right across the street um, on the opposite side of the street on Norma. And it's in front of the gas station, the Spirit gas station. And street lights along Norma alternate. There'll be one on one side of the street, then another one on the other, then up at the corner of, of Norma and Graff is another street light that's on this side. So I would argue that there's already plenty of street lights on, uh, on Norma. With respect to Reeves, if you go west on Reeves, there are no street lights. None of the other uh, improved properties along Reeves have been required to put in any street lights. So I would request that this applicant not have to put in street lights just to get his map approved. Uh, furthermore, <clears throat> there's a condition that says that he has to annex his property into a landscaping, lighting, and maintenance district, um, which has been a condition of just about every map in the city, but it's a terribly onerous condition. The cost of the applicant's probably going to be between seven and ten thousand dollars to pay the city to just create the district and then annex him in, and then that's so that he can do maintenance on one streetlight. Um, it would probably be better if if you just condition the map to say he'll have to pay for that streetlight. I don't, I, you know, it's the streetlight's already there. But to set up a district just to pay for the annual maintenance on one street light seems ridiculous. And the, these, these landscaping lighting districts are very expensive to set up. They require a report, an engineer's report. And, um, and Lauren has additional overhead, things he has to do. And then the owner has to pay one year's maintenance in advance which from what I've seen from past projects, that'll be a, somewhere between two and $3,000 for the applicant. So I just, I don't want to see, if he has to do that, it's just going to kill the project or it's going to kill the map. Um, so I'm asking that all of condition number five be struck. <clears throat> condition six is seismic hazard zone. And my question on this is, I understand what Lauren is saying here in the condition, but is this is he requiring a note on the map, or is this just a statement of fact? If he wants a note on the map, then it needs to it needs to state such. If he's just stating something, it's it says the subdivider shall inform any future tenant or owner of the proximity to the Little Lake Fault. I don't know how you enforce that condition other than just putting a note on the map, which we'd be fine with. It might be noted that in a real estate contract on the due diligence, uh, that has to be disclosed anyway, so I'm right. not sure why it's there either. Right. They have to do seismic hazard analysis on, on <clears throat> all real estate transactions now. So the any future owner would be noticed in that manner. So. I would I would request then that that condition number five be struck. Um, moving on, or actually that's condition number six for seismic hazard. Moving on, the parcel map requirements. Uh, condition seven A says, or this is A seven A. Prior to tentative parcel map approval, submit a detailed site plan as required by City of Ridgecrest Municipal Code. The site's already developed. Mm -hmm. There's no point in submitting a site plan. If you want to see the site plan, it's right up there. It shows you the two buildings, the parking lots, et cetera. So I'd request that that condition be deleted. Then condition seven, A7C, no, A7E says provide co covenant conditions and restrictions. Um, since these two parcels don't share anything, I don't see why any CCNRs would be required. They wouldn't, there's nothing that would be covered by CCNRs. They have their own parking facilities. There's no shared parking, shared utilities, or shared driveways. So I ask that condition, that that condition be deleted. And then uh, condition nine. B, design and construct fire protection hydrants or facilities per Kern County Fire Department. I, 
as far as I know, all these facilities already exist. So I'd like to see that condition deleted. Condition C says design and construct miscellaneous support utilities necessary for development of the project. I think, I don't know why that one's there. The site's already developed and the utilities are already in. So if we could del delete condition C. And condition D, the, pro the project plan shall be reviewed by police, fire, and emergency services for access and circulation. I don't know what they would review. The site's already fully developed and I, and so I ask that that condition also be deleted. And then condition A9I says pre prepare reciprocal access and maintenance easements and agreements for parking areas and drivings to be shared. Let's delete that condition because there's nothing that's going to be shared. So I'd, uh, once again, the, my, uh, the, the project applicant, Mr. Mallory, is willing to deal with the ADA access on the, uh, the sidewalks around the site and to fix the corner so there's an ADA uh, wheelchair ramp at the corner. But uh, the rest of these conditions, e either they don't have a direct bearing on the map. It looks like Lauren might have used some boilerplate from some other, con some other project that don't apply to this one. But in particular, the street lighting condition is, is particularly onerous and expensive. So that's the one I'm most concerned about. But with, uh, with that, I'm open to any questions or comments. Thank you for listening. We appreciate it. Thank you. Um, does the commission have any questions for Mr. Witten? It's just clear as mud to you, right? Well, it, yeah. Okay. So, Mr. Witten, um, and I appreciate what you've prepared here. If you wouldn't mind, I would like to take just a few minutes, and I want to go through the resolution. Okay. And I understand where you're at, and and I understand where staff is at. Um, and the only reason I want to do that is because uh, of your suggestion of deletions doesn't correspond with the resolution. And uh, so the resolution's uh, numbers don't meet up with yours. And so what, you, what you're suggesting is uh, it puts us in a, in a quandary. We can accept staff's conditions or we can accept your conditions or we can go through it and look at each one of these and decide what we would probably approve. What? Is this not in your resolution? And it's different than this one because I was going off three and all three of them were different. The one that he read from. It could be that by the deletion by Mr. Witten of some of the conditions that the uh, subsequent You're conditions. You're talking about were, this one. Not, no longer numbered the same. Yeah, Would you like a copy of what Mr. Witten has that is striked through well, so you can I, see it as I it think, compares to the final? Is, I think this is it. But the, the problem I have is if this is the one Mr. Witten wrote and this is the one that staff wrote, which one do you want us to approve? And so I want to go through. I have the one from the staff that was given to me on my desk tonight. And if this is Mr. Witten's, is that yours? Yes, and I, and I saw a lot of those. Well, and he just gave me one. Okay, but this, this is the resolution and, and so if, if we're going to delete anything, it's going to have to be part of this resolution. And so it's going to have to, um, we're, we're going to have to have some legality here. So that's what I'm saying is we can make a motion to approve it with Mr. Witten's suggestions, or we can go through it and understand what we're deleting because what he, what he said in most part just makes sense. Right. But isn't this what after deletion? This is this yeah. is the resolution after deletion. Yes. Staff has prepared 
one this which one. is yeah. the least. This one. Because that's not the line item that he just read off from. That's correct. So this, yeah. so because, e, because E is still there and he's deleted E. No. no Mr. Cox. Yes, sir. When I was using Word, I used their, uh, their red line strikeout uh, tracking. And so when I delete something, what it's done is it's renumbered everything below. And so when I, for instance, when I deleted condition three, yes. it struck it out and then it renumbered everything below it. Correct. And, um, but it shows you what the original numbering was and the original numbering corresponds to the conditions that were um, that were delivered to me uh, yesterday. And, and so the, re the red line strikeout version that you're looking at should have the same original numbers as was in the staff report. Okay, so on your version, of course, you struck out, for example, A5, street lighting. And on your version, five is survey requirements. And, and so that's why I'm saying, to staff, is this the one we're going to go off from or the one that staff prepared? We should use the original numbering that staff that's, prepared. That's what I think should happen. Mm -hmm. It should be this one and we should go through it. Yes, you can take the original draft, which should be included at the end of the staff report, and then each item, which uh, Mr. Witten discussed, we can you can examine the individual merits of and determine whether or not you want to strike it per his request. Does that make sense? So I'm not trying to reinvent the wheel. Right. I'm just trying to make sure when Heather does the resolution and I go up to sign it, I'm not, I don't have three versions on my desk like I have right now. I only have one, so I don't know. Okay. Anyway, so I would like to, I'd like to go back and, and so the question I have for you, Mr. Witten, if, if we approved your deletions, he is prepared to um, comply by all those things that you've got there. Correct. Mm -hmm. And the, the other items, for instance, there's a condition that says trim existing pine trees along Reeves Avenue. So we'll do those. Okay. Any questions from the commission? I don't have any questions, but I want to make a comment. I mean, that building has been vacant for a long time. I'd like to see that building occupied. I mean, we are looking for development and always moving on with economic development and want to see our empty buildings occupied. So um, these conditions, I think, are mainly for a new subdivision. So. I totally agree with Mr. Witten that uh, those conditions, some of them which he pointed out, can be removed. So, so where I'm where I'm going with this, Mr. Witten, is is even if if I've got the, your version in one a one a remove all existing concrete. Spandrel curb gutter and sidewalks on the Norma and Reeves curb return and design and construct ADA compliant curb returns and replace. What? Now the question I have come on our staff report. Come back to the aerial color view. Nope. One more. There's one in our staff report that has that detail a lot better. It's pulled in. This, this picture right here. Okay, so this bottom picture here, and I'd like a definition. Uh, the purpose of an ADA approach or a driveway that is coming in is so that the handicapped have an opportunity to, uh, to travel on a flat surface. In the city of Ridgecrest, we have a 10-foot um, utility easement and in the event that you have a tapered driveway like this, then you can put an apron behind it. This sidewalk is level. That one's fine. And, Some of the and other it, driveways and it, are not. Uh, 
the, the taper is in the driveway and not on the sidewalk. Now, we don't have, uh, you know, our warning on each side of that driveway for, for handicap that it, there's a driveway there. But I'm wondering on some of these because the condition, uh, does it not say, excuse me, I'm going back to it. Remove existing. There is not, there's not a definition of this one, this one, or this one. So we're removing it all. Miss, Mr. Cox, um, this is pertaining to the curb return. And there's right. no handicap ramp currently at the curb at the return. Corner. At the corner. Yeah, this condition applies to the corner where it says curb return and replace the spandrel. Now, I don't know if the entire spandrel has to be replaced. I was looking at it today. There's a big power pole right in the middle of, of where you'd put a normal handicap ramp. So we're probably going to have to do a custom ramp that's either to the north of the power pole or to the south of the power pole, wherever there's room for it, which means we're not going to have to remove the whole, the whole curb return. But I'm confident that whatever we come up with, Lauren will work with us. We'll come up with a, an ADA-compliant ramp at the corner so that the, the corner is is conforming. To me, this condition says we have to bring the, the corner curb return up to ADA standards. And so yeah, the, the corner I can understand. I'm right. just questioning whether or not all of it has to be replaced. The expense is, is astronomical. Here. Yeah, I, I don't think it'll all have to be replaced, but some of it will be because we're going to have to take, we're going to have to demolish the existing sidewalk either replace the existing curb return or we, sha or, or we shave uh, the curb down so that it's, it, you can grind the curb down to be flush with the uh, adjacent concrete. And, but it'll require construction plans and, and, um, and a modification of the curb return okay. so that it meets ADA standards. And, and Caltrans has details. There are a number of different ways to tackle this. And Lauren's always been very accommodating to help us figure out how to deal with the existing. There's a bunch of utility boxes um, on the corner, too, that we're going to have to work around. So I don't think we're going to have to demolish the entire curb return, but there's going to have to be some work done there. Well, I, and I guess my concern, and this would come back to the city engineer, is that because of the power poles and other things, I, I, I wouldn't want to, oh, by the way, this doesn't meet ADA, and so you're going to have to pay to move the poles. No. And, and so yeah. I'm concerned that the language is ambiguous enough that it could be open-ended, and I don't want it to be open-ended. So that's why I'm coming back and asking you and your client if oh. you're okay with these conditions. Well, that you if, you, if you want to make this um, more compact, we could simply strike the portions that don't say, you'll notice on the second line after the word and, it says construct an ADA compliant curb return. We could simply change this condition that says construct an ADA compliant curb return at the corner of Norma and Reeves. And we can accommodate that. Uh, it's it's a pretty big area, and um, and I think there's room on the north side to uh, to put in a curb ramp. Would you be okay with that? Uh, Mr. Chairman, commissioners, uh, first of all, I'd like to say that you know staff does realize that these conditions are onerous. Uh, for such a small project, and uh, and the conditions that are that are stated here are standard conditions for any land division, and that's a parcel map, regardless of its size. It's uh, standard conditions for a track map, irregardless of the size. The uh, municipal code is silent on how to treat smaller uh, development projects, smaller land division projects. So, first of all, I want to say that this. Staff does realize the onerous nature of these conditions. Um, as far as that curb return, uh, staff's review, we did a field review and found that uh, the existing curb or the existing return was a monolithic pour, meaning there are no cold joints there. That uh, when, the, when the return was constructed, it was constructed in one solid pour. And so we didn't, staff didn't see a convenient method of uh, removing 
any of the return at an existing cold joint. And what it would require to do anything different would be saw cutting in some fashion to create this ADA compliant driveway. Now, uh, saw cutting something uh, existing can lead to some problems, and it's all dependent upon the condition of the existing concrete. If there's cracking there, uh, if there's any um, any uh, deterioration of the concrete or the surface there, then that might go astray. So uh, the the safe bet is to reconstruct the return in some sort of a, a standard way. Now, the location of the return, the location of the ramp can be adjusted, but uh, if, if we do anything other than uh, constructing a standard ramp, then you're going to have something that is uh, maybe not of standard and then subjective in terms of the quality of the workmanship and the uh, end product. So, but uh, um, staff is willing to work on that. If there is some way in which we can find that the existing concrete is competent and, and there's not uh, a lot of cracking there and we can, if, uh, if it's acceptable to uh, all that we do saw cuts that uh, can construct this ADA ramp, well, I'm more than willing to try to accommodate them. But just, just to let you know, there's, there's, uh, there's some potential there, depending on the competency of the existing concrete that's there. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Chairman? Yes, sir. May, may, I, may I also, um, you know, the uh, uh, staff has a little concern on the uh, use of shaving of concrete. Um, staff doesn't have a, a standard in which to go by there. So this is going to be a very subjective thing. It's also going to establish a precedent in that uh, uh, staff simply doesn't have any uh, criteria for what the finished product might be for, for shaving. Now, there's uh, been several attempts at that throughout the city that I've, I've found, and there's varying uh, levels of uh, quality or, or workmanship to that. So it's a very subjective uh, approach to trying to remedy um, a, a noncompliant or a trip hazard. Now, uh, staff does recognize that this would be much cheaper and would be a, 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 an option, but I, I do need to caution you that this, this would be establishing a precedent. Others will want to be treated the same way and that your staff does not have uh, really a standard to go by or a quality of workmanship that we would judge such work. Thank you. So, Mr. Witten, uh, jumping down to his point, uh, one of the concerns that I might have in relationship to areas that, that we might sand down uh, so that we don't have a trip area is I've driven over to this property and, and I'm asking a question more than anything else because I don't remember where all the pine trees are. In most cases, if we have lifted sidewalk, we can have heat-related consequence that causes it to lift, but we can also have pine tree rooting that causes a problem. So if we have areas uh, that are being lifted by existing landscaping, I would suggest not only if you're going to shave it, that that tree comes out because that's going to be an ongoing problem, which will be an ongoing liability. And and so that that's the only point that I would have. And I don't know that you have any, I know that you have in the medians, you know, in the parking areas, you have some trees, but I don't know if we have anything close enough to the sidewalk to upset it, do you? There are some Mexican fan palms that are adjacent to the sidewalk on Reeves. And there's a big pine tree that's, um, it's near the sidewalk, but I think it's set back maybe eight or 10 feet, but it's right at the west end. It's, it's right at the very end of the sidewalk. And then beyond the sidewalk to the west, there's, there's nothing, there's just a dirt lot. So I'm not aware of any, any trees along the right of way that... Palms are generally not the big problem because they're a ball and right. small root. It's more of a, uh, you know, your pine trees and that that would cause that, right. so. Um, <clears throat> So coming down here in, in uh, any of these conditions, I would ask the commission, um, do you have concerns 
relative to the original um, conditions to the suggestion of Mr. Witten's? I don't. I don't. Okay, so Mr. Witten, if I've got the correct one that you've given me, I have a number three that says seismic hazard zone. Yes, but it's only number three because it should have a six next to it. Well, I'm just I'm just thinking that's redundant as we as you talked about because uh, yes, it sits in a fault and yes, he could tell somebody, but that's a full disclosure uh, in the due diligence of a real estate contract. Right. So I'm wondering why we have three at all. Okay, it's it's. It could be deleted. I, as far as I'm concerned, it's a. Uh, it's just a notification. I don't yeah. care if it's there. Right. It's it's gonna it's gonna happen. It's just it's an unenforceable condition. So I would. I don't care whether it's there or not. But it would be cleaner if we if we struck the condition. Okay, and and so you're okay on the parcel map requirements entering into an improvement agreement between the city and the subdivider prior to the final map approval. Well, that will only come into play if the, uh, the proposed public improvements are not complete. But that's, that's a normal part of subdividing by parcel map. But usually what would happen in the sequence of, of these items is we would, we would take care of the sidewalk issues, the ADA issues, and once those have been signed off and accepted by the city engineer, then there's no need for an improvement agreement. That, that condition would just go away because it's unnecessary. Thank you. Um, any comment from the public? <coughs> Thank you, Mr. Wood. Thank you. Just a minute. Any, any comment from the public? Comments from staff? Uh, yes, Mr. Chairman, if I may. Um, staff would uh, like to uh, give you a perspective here on these uh, conditions. Um, the conditions that we have here are municipal code requirements and are established by ordinance. So staff would caution the commission on uh, waiving uh, some of the conditions. Now, what staff would be willing to endorse would be an appeal to the city council for uh, offering some relief of the conditions. Um, the um, the uh, lighting uh, requirement is very specific within the municipal code and called for. Um, the uh, parcel map requirements are very specific for the improvement agreement and the Improvement security. Um, the staff does not have the discretion to waive those, nor does the planning commission, uh, by the fact that these are in the ordinance requirements in which the city council has the only authority to waive those requirements. Now, uh, Mr. Witten makes perfect sense in his approach and in his desires for his client here, but I have to caution you that. Uh, that these are established by ordinance in which the city council uh, as the only body that has that authority to offer any leniency or, or grace. Um, I did want to mention that uh, staff did have a requirement in there for CCNRs and also for the uh, preparation of reciprocal access maintenance for driveways. There is a connecting slab that goes between the two parking lots. And you can physically drive uh, from one parking lot to the adjoiner. And that's the only reason that uh, particular, those conditions are in there. Now, if the slab goes away, there's no physical method of, of uh, going from one parking lot to the other. Uh, fine. There's no need for CCNRs and there's no need for reciprocal access or maintenance agreement. But there is right now a slab that does connect the two parking lots. What and is this retaining wall down here on the bottom? Doesn't that divide the two parcels? Uh, no, it doesn't. Uh, if you um, drive the drive aisle going uh, north, directly in front of Dr. Mallory's uh, office, there is a slab directly 
uh, crossing into the adjoining parking lot. And uh, it's apparent that whoever the prior uh, lot Texas merger had, had prepared uh, wanted to enjoy being able to get from one lot to the other or from one parking lot to the other. So I, I just caution you that, uh, that there is physical method of uh, traversing from one parking lot to the other. And if so, if that is, is utilized, then there should be some reciprocal agreement for maintenance and for uh, access rights. Okay. So, th and that's the only reason that's in there. Now, many of these, I looked up a number of these, and many of them says, if the planning commission so desires. It doesn't say have to, it doesn't say must. Uh, there's a lot of conditions that says the planning commission, if they so choose. And so, when you use the language that it's absolutely mandatory, which ones are you talking about? Well, I would I would have to go back and review. I just don't have them committed to memory. But, but the, the most part, if there is a uh, if there is a municipal code section, it also cites the ordinance. And if indeed there is that uh, uh, permission granted to the planning commission, by all means. But uh, I do caution you that many of the uh, ordinances, if not all, unless there is something of exception that I'm not aware of. Uh, really doesn't offer the Planning Commission that opportunity or ability to waive ordinance requirements. Um, I might uh, also mention that uh, that uh, the, uh, the conditions here also are a record, a permanent record for the Planning Commission's actions. The uh, Planning Commission has a fiducial responsibility for the public's health, safety, and welfare. And that's what staff looks at. When you see something like um, that uh, the uh, project is to be reviewed by the fire emergency services uh, for access and circulation or to construct fire improvements as necessary, uh, you know, the public is going to occupy these structures. And these parcels are creating these parcels have a potential for uh, potential for land sale or to be leased, in which the public's going to occupy these structures. And the unknown condition there is that we don't know what's inside that structure. We don't know what sort of fire facilities are there. We don't know what has been done by prior owners to that structure to know if the public's health, safety, and welfare are intact. Therefore, staff has, 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 has put together what are standard conditions that do, uh, number one, give notice and be of record that we have given notice that there is this concern for the public's health, safety, and welfare for, for fire protection. So, uh, that's 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 the purpose of this is to make sure that the an innocent person buying the property uh, and, and that the city has some record that we have evaluated the project and given notice that there is that potential and uh, and has recommended that that uh, fire be looked at police as well as emergency services have an opportunity to look at the project and offer suggestions for the public safety okay so let me let me give my thoughts on, on this particular subject I own a commercial building in the community and and when you sell it or you rent it uh, the fire department as a recourse and you get a building or a, a a business license to occupy business, the fire department as a consequence automatically comes and inspects it and gives you a list of things that you need to do to comply. Um, my concern is, is with this particular um, addition is that we're taking a building and we're saying we're going to ask it to be uh, comply with, with current fire code and fire suppression. Uh, at the expense of, of the individual. Uh, Dr. Mallory is wanting to divide the two parcels into two, and, and should the, the second parcel be uh, developed, some of these requirements would be required by the developer. 
um, in order to get a business license and occupy the building. It would have to meet fire code and so on and so forth. I am not sure to divide this property that that is a necessary uh, qualification in the, in the health and safety of the community because it's going to have to be met at some point anyway. And so although I appreciate what you're saying, what he's trying to do, I'm not sure that it's, that it's something that we have to do. Um, having said that, Commission, and we've spent a lot of time on this, unless there's anything from the public, um, I, to, to meet Lauren's concern on any municipal code that we might not be able to um, judge for ourselves, uh, if if the owner and Mr. Witten feel that this is acceptable, I've looked over the differences and the original, you can see I've marked up and it, which is contrary to a little bit of the original. I would suggest maybe commission that we accept the revisions that Mr. Witten has given to us pending city council approval. So we approve it, send it up to them if there are municipal codes that we're deleting that they can either approve or not. I'm not asking them to rehear it. I think that if there are, if those some of those codes are within the jurisdiction of the Planning Commission, because I went through a number of them that were, then it's done. But if there is one or two that is the privy of the, of the city council, I would suggest that maybe those two items be brought to their attention solely and not try to rehear what the planning commission has gone through. And so that would be probably my suggestion. So um, I would take a motion. Mr. Mr. Chairman, can I read something? Yes, sir. Um, on the Municipal Code 19-1.4, Advisory Agency, the Planning Commission is hereby designated as the Advisory Agency with respect to subdivisions and parcel ma maps as provided in said Subdivision Map Act and shall have all powers and duties with respect to subdivisions and parcel maps, the maps thereof and the procedures relating to thereto, which are specific by law and by this chapter. So by way, by virtue of this, I think Planning Commission has authority to do something in this case. I did talk to the city attorney too, and he advised that we did. But if there is any question in your mind, I am suggesting that caveat. If there is not, then in your motion, Do I have a motion? I so move. Move what? The new resolution. That we accept what? The resolution with the strikeouts as provided by provided by Mr. Whitney. I second. Chairman Cox? Aye. Vice Chairman Roger Ottenham? Aye. Commissioner Yates? Aye. Commissioner Ferris? Aye. Four ayes. Motion carries. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Culp. Thank you, Mr. Whitney. Moving on, we uh, move down to uh, B, 8B. This is a vacation of public right of way, uh, consideration uh, of a recommendation to the City Council to vacate the portion of the public right of way. Uh, access APN 033-050-11, a request by Walmart, Sto Walmart Stores, Inc. for the proposed uh, amendment. And now we'll just stop right there at Walmart, Inc. Staff report. Yes, uh, Mr. Chairman, this is a uh, procedural uh, matter. Uh, typically on any kind of a tentative map, um, the uh, the subdivision map act requires uh, any uh, utility or any person that has any interest in property either either in fee or by easement to be identified on the uh, on the tentative map and the uh, the process of uh, identifying uh, 
rights to property and also the subsequent disposition of that property is, is identified on the final map. So this, this item is uh, somewhat uh, redundant, but uh, at the advisement of the city attorney, he requested that we go ahead with this, uh, what's called a summary vacation of the right-of-way. A summary vacation of right-of-way is simply uh, where we conduct a public hearing, we notify utilities, uh, we uh, send out notices, and uh, we then conduct a public hearing uh, relative to the vacation of that right-of-way. Um, in this uh, particular case, um, I think we have an exhibit there to show you what, uh, what's proposed. Uh, there's the old uh, College Heights Spur that traverses this uh, particular APN. And uh, the utilities, uh, all the improvements have been constructed for this, uh, for this particular project in which all the utilities have been satisfied. They are secured in their rights of, uh, of occupying the easements that exist. The uh, vacation of that right-of-way is for uh, the public's use. And uh, therefore, that's what's, uh, what's requiring us to have this public hearing. Um, so staff's recommendation would be to open up the public hearing, hear any public testimony, and staff's recommendation would be to make a recommendation to city council to go ahead and vacate this right away. No utilities in it currently? Yes, sir, there are, but they have been secured and they are within their own easements. There are no, uh, there are, all the utilities have either been relocated or um, have been, um, or, or occupy their current position and are secured in their position and, and retain their rights of, of use and, and of maintenance of those utilities. Thank you. Commissioner, comments? Just have a couple of questions. Um, is this being used by public now or uh, is there any traffic? No, there is not. Um, the site has been completely improved. Uh, there's no physical evidence of uh, the public utilizing that right away, it, uh, and it has uh, not had any evidence of usage by the public for many years. Uh, so that uh, it has uh, a long history of not having uh, public usage. So how is this going to help Walmart? I mean by vacating the public access? Um, the, uh, it simply removes a right that the city has for the public to utilize that right of way. Thank it you. simply yeah. eliminates the public's uh, use right. of that. Thank you, well, Mr. I think also, Mr. Culp, also in our easement now transfers into Chain Lake Boulevard and there's a 10 foot utility easement there, is there not? The well, uh, the, the, we we currently have a sewer easement that occupies this uh, alignment. It is uh, just to the north of the 55-foot uh, uh, right of way that we're vacating our public usage of, and the city retains the usage and rights to that existing sewer uh, uh, easement. Now there are utilities that have been relocated over to China Lake. Uh, they occupy the public's right of way. They do not occupy it by any other uh, right, but uh, by having rights of in a public right of way for both public as well as utilities. They have rights to occupy the public right of way. Right. Well, that's that's why I'm saying by vacating this, we still have public right of way on China Lake Boulevard. Oh yes, where, sir. Yes, sir. For yes. utilities and so on and so forth. So we're not we're not eliminating our access to the properties. No, no, by no means. Okay. Any other commissioner comments? Yeah, Public? just so just so I'm clear, I just we're just talking about for tonight. We're just talking about having a public hearing about pursuing this. Yes, uh, okay. the uh, the requirements for a summary vacation requires to have a public hearing to hear public testimony on the uh, vacation of that right of way. There could be someone that has some uh, interest or usage or history of usage of that. And that's the purpose of having a public hearing, to allow the public to come in and make some claim of, of the usage of that particular right-of-way. Now, would that be uh, city council? 
Well, city council is the only ones that can officially vacate. It requires the planning commission to first conduct the public hearing and uh, take any public testimony and then make recommendation to the city council for mm -hmm. the vacation of so the right So we would way. conduct it. That's what I was after. Thank you. Any other commissioner comments? Okay, so we will turn it over to the public. Is there any comments from the public? Jim Fogger, 207 West Cobblestone. Um, just one question. At one time, Lauren, wasn't there a, a plan to put a bike path through there, uh, that same area? It seems to me that that was one of the original considerations for that particular right of way. Uh, yes, I believe uh, the Planning Commission had requested staff to take a look to see if, <coughs> <coughs> pardon me, if there was uh, some physical way of uh, putting a bicycle path across this uh, same access. And uh, staff did indeed uh, take a look at that. And with the current improvements that are there and the plan for uh, the structures that are going to be there in parking lots, it would be a uh, significant, um, um, it would be uh, uh, significantly impacting the uh, future users of that, of that property. It could be considered um, uh, a, a separation of, of rights to be able to utilize the property by uh, offer by offering some physical uh, means of pedestrians or bicyclists to utilize that access. How how would the commissioners uh, know that without being able to see the buildings? Um, well, the um, the only way would be to look at the original site plan that was prepared for the project to see what the relationship of the proposed structures and their uh, parking lots would be relative to this alignment. And uh, it, it, it truly does bisect and would significantly impact their ability to utilize their, their, their well, parcels. Again, uh, I'm not sure if the commissioners uh, recollect this. I'm not saying you don't, but there was a, a lot of interest when that bicycle path was put in coming down off of College uh, Heights to come onto the Walmart uh, property and go on through. Not only, not only to just access the Walmart property, but so right now that uh, bike path sort of just peters out up there at Dolphin, I believe. Yeah, it's currently going to Dolphin. Uh, so Jim, one of the one of the uh, things that the commission did last, I'm thinking summer, uh, we talked about this looking at the feasibility that should these lots be developed that in the utility easement in the front area that we look at the feasibility of asking them to build the bike trail through across, through those uh, front of those lots bordering China Lake and that was something that staff was going to look at the feasibility should they be developed and and so the bike path was not not abandoned uh, we were looking at alternatives and, and so that's the alternative that we came up with. Okay, so um, just one final point. Um, when the city has something to give away, and which is fine, and we're looking for something that will be of public benefit, that in this case runs almost in the, across the same ground, I think it's a good time to, to request in a formal way, actually, that uh, the bike path uh, option be, how would you put, put in more concrete? Um, that's my suggestion, rather than let it hang out there. And of course, you might know where I'm coming from because we have a hard, a hard time getting Walmart to, uh, you know, give us things that they, uh, that they think they possess. Here we have things that we could ask them, and it's not asking too much, to, uh, it might even benefit them uh, to put that in concrete for the city as a requirement to, uh, for vacating this access. And that's all I have to say. Thanks. Thank you, Thank Jim. You. Any other commissioner comments? Do I have a motion? We just need to 
send it up to council, right? I make a motion for vacation of public right of way. And I second. Chairman Cox? Aye. Vice Chairman Rajaratnam? Aye. Commissioner Yates? Aye. Commissioner Ferris? Aye. Four ayes, motion carries. Thank you. Um, moving on to nine uh, commissioner items and comments, uh, committee reports. Start with Mr. Ferris. Uh, economic development, we discussed the ICSC show in Las Vegas and are strategizing about going there. We've hired a new, um, no, never mind. Um, we're looking at hiring somebody <laughs> new, uh, a new economic development consultant. And uh, discuss the, um, the upcoming website and calendar that we have yet to see from RACVB. Thank you. Mr. Mm Yates. -hmm. Uh, city organization, a um, couple items that we discussed. Uh, one was we moved uh, the meeting schedule from the Tuesday to a Monday. Um, another agenda item was, uh, which was a pretty good one, was dealing with the um, prohibition of smoking in the public parks. So we discussed, um, the chief of police was there, gave us a really good report, and some of the ordinances that he had pulled up from some of the other cities about the setbacks of someone smoking uh, around playgrounds, ball fields, and such. So um, there's more to come on that. We actually sent that to city council with a price of a range of uh, dollar amount for fines. So um, for the city to adopt that ordinance. We also discussed um, future agendas items we're going to be talking about property and sales tax uh, quarterly. That pretty much was. We don't have a city ordinance presently that, that uh, talks about uh, uh, public property, not smoking on public property except in designated areas? No, not for the parks. Not for the parks, public parks. I was thinking it was a broad brush, all public areas no. that are controlled by the city. We, we do not. Okay. Surprising. Okay. Mr. Raja Ratnam. Same. <laughs> okay, so um, we did have an infrastructure committee meeting and I was absent. I was in San Diego and it was this last Thursday. They did discuss uh, paving of our streets, whether to do a microfill, which is what some of the improvements have been done recently, is a microfill or um, chip surface. Um, and so um, I, I don't know what other significant things that you guys talked about. Do you remember? Sure, come on, come on up, because I remember getting the report on the on the machine and stuff. I think there was a report on the uh, sewer plant uh, or an update on it. That's okay. About if I turn it, that better? Okay, yeah. yeah. Um, Bar Lauer, Public Works Director for the city. Um, the main two items that were discussed, uh, there was a discussion on the slurry machine and um, whether that was going to be purchased right now or not. There was no final decision made, um, as well as during that discussion, they talked about some of the work that's going to be done this year. And then on the sewer plant, uh, the discussion was mainly that the letter is still on the Undersecretary of the Navy's desk. and hopefully that we would have some form of movement before this summer. So no deadline on that. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, commissioner comments. Mr. Ferris. No, no, no. Mr. Yates. Yes, I just wanted to say to, uh, thanks to uh, city engineer and uh, also the staff for 
this was kind of a, a difficult one. And to the commission, I want to say a good job because I feel that if we continue to send things up to city council, then we're not doing what we were appointed to do. So I know some of these decisions are tough, but uh, for what we can handle on this level, I think it would be pertinent for us to continue to do so. So thanks. Thank you. And we just want to thank Mr. Culp for his hard work and due diligence. I mean, I know he puts a lot of time and effort into this. Truly appreciate your hard work in this. Thank you very much. I, too, uh, would like to thank our city engineer um, and, and staff. Um, this was complex in its nature, but uh, simple. And I understand looking out for the city. And I don't want you to think for one minute we did not hear your concerns. And so I, I appreciate you doing that. Um, future agenda items, does the uh, commission have anything that staff needs to put on as future agenda items? Staff? Um, one of the things that I asked was for to ask you about uh, past projects that had come and future projects to kind of give us an update. We talked about things like Arby's and Starbucks and and uh, different different things that were kind of in the works. Some of them put on hold, some of them that went forward. Um, so I think that would be part of the future agenda items. I would like to see um, us address a little bit at a time uh, the municipal code. Um, there, uh, everybody acknowledges that, that we have some ambiguity on some of our uh, spots and uh, and tonight was a good example of some of that, and I'd like to see some of that come forward as a future agenda item. Uh, staff items? Can I ask a question? Yes, sir. Based on what you just said, we had talked as a group already about starting, because we recognize the problems with this one from today, starting revisions of the municipal code. At what point does the Planning Commission wants to be involved. Because I know that it's going to be three or four of us sit down and, and look through and see what you think needs to be done. Well, what, what I envisioned, and you might get recommendations from the City Council, maybe, is that truthfully what we're here to do is do the heavy lifting. And so you have, you have a staff or a paid staff that, that can go in and say, well, we should this and this and this and this. But the purpose of civilian oversight is the idea that we also have input. So when we serve on infrastructure committee, we have input. Uh, we give direction. We vote. Um, same thing here. Um, although the municipal code would be changed by the council, I would like, as we did with the wall, with with this vacation of easement is I would like to come in and this is what the code says, this is where we would like to take it and have a discussion and that the planning commission recommends, not staff recommends, but the planning commission recommends to city council uh, approval. And then that way you get a civilian group uh, that, that would maybe have input or say, no, I think that that's completely appropriate. Um, and, and that's what I envision. Uh, commissioners, what are your thoughts? I, I know uh, with first being appointed to this commission, I thought that was one of our duties was to uh, go through there and make the changes along with uh, staff. That's what I thought. But now, I want to make sure I understand what you said. You said that staff would go through the code, decide what changes, set it up as a, this is what it says, it's a discussion and, item or. And, and then bring it to you here as a discussion item, or did you want, this is where You're going to have to ask the attorney because that may be uh, just like the vacation. The Planning Commission is making a recommendation. We're recommending that you make this change as part of a resolution. They're the ones that are going to have to sign the resolution. Okay? But here's the resolution change. And, and so we're signing off and saying we recommend this resolution or this change or however it legally has to be worded 
uh, for the council to vote on it. Because the council's going to have to vote on it, and it's either going to be by resolution or however it's done. And, and that's the form it should come to us. This is the change. This is what you're recommending to the city council. You know, I think the discussion should be here so that they can look at it and say, the people that we've appointed have, have listened to it and discussed it with our staff and recommend this. There doesn't have to be some long discussion or, or make the city council five hours over it. Um, and so I think we can do the heavy list lifting. Now, if that needs to be a public hearing, if we're going to change it, uh, however it needs to be legally, uh, as a recommendation to the city council. So if we have the public hearing so they don't have to, that's fine too. Let us do the heavy lifting. And we can just take one bite out of the apple at a time so that we're not trying to overwhelm. But we do need to make some revisions. Okay? Is that... Clear to everybody? Yes, it, it may please the commissioners to know that uh, specifically some of the uh, sections of the code which are, were cited tonight are being considered for review and that we hope to bring uh, suggested revisions both here to the Planning Commission and to Infrastructure Committee as appropriate. Uh, we believe we can streamline and, and preempt some of these issues that we saw tonight uh, going forward. Very Thank good. You. Very well. I, I think the goal of everybody, including staff, we want, we want people to come. We want them to develop. We can't make it so hard that it's just not cost effective for them to even show up. And, and I think everybody's on board. And I think some of the, the code could be worded differently or, or whatever. And I think let us do the heavy lifting so that we put the recommendation up to the city council and, and they'll either like it or they won't and they can send it back to us if they want. But if the public hearing has to be here, let it be here. Okay, um, any other staff item future and past? Uh, any report on uh, the things that are crossing your desk? Uh, uh, tell me about Red Rock uh, Villas. The planning consultant is working away at it, and um, he has made some other, found some other changes. So soon, you'll be hearing it soon, maybe April, the soonest. Well, let's let's stay with this. I know that the Navy would like to see the apartments come in, but uh, you know, aside from that, uh, some of some of the conditions that we're stuck with. Uh, or, or that maybe we can tailor a little bit because I, I talked to the engineer, I talked to the developer, and they're right at the point of not coming. And, and so time, time has elapsed, and sometimes what we'll find is, is that you kind of strike when the iron's hot. So this comes back to if we make it so hard that they won't, they won't come. And, and so we, we need to encourage them to come. Uh, otherwise, the dollars and cents doesn't pencil out sometimes when you're talking about repaying a loan of that nature. And, and so let's make sure that we work with them and not just sit back and, you know, check on them, see what you can do, what we can do as a, as a city to help them down the road. Uh, any other projects that, that we've heard recently that you can give us a report on? At present, there's not much coming down the way, um, but we will diligently report on whatever does uh, get presented to us or, or any submissions. Okay. What about the self-storage on in your, in your street? Uh, we've had n neither submission nor any correspondence uh, from the owners of late. So you're waiting for information from the owners. There is a self-storage expansion, phase three on Inyo Street, Ridgecrest self-storage. Mm -hmm. So, I mean... So yes, essentially we are waiting for a, s a submission or, or to hear from them. Uh, if they have any questions about how to proceed, we'd be happy to advise them on how to do so. Okay. Thank you. Okay, commissioners, any other items? If not, we'll adjourn this at 740. Thank you.